Like many cruisers, I love to share and learn tricks of cruising. With that in mind, I'm sharing the one tip or trick that our viewers use or love the most up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and large or small, every tip and cruise hack you can learn helps make your next Royal Caribbean cruise a little bit better. If you've watched some of my videos here, then you know there are a ton of great tips we've shared, but I wanted to know what cruise advice the readers of RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com always use. The way I see it, if people think enough of these tips to share them, then they're worth noting for your cruise. Let's start off with number one, which is arrive to the embarkation port early. The day of your cruise is scheduled to begin, arrive to the cruise terminal in the morning to maximize your time on board the first day. It seems most people arrive to the cruise terminal after lunch, but you can begin checking into your cruise usually around 10 a.m. with boarding process usually beginning around 11 a.m. Arriving early to the cruise terminal means you'll get on board sooner and that means more time on your ship on the first day of the cruise. Next up, bring a USB port outlet for more charging space. Between the phones, tablets, and every device you may have, there's always a need to charge something and power outlets are limited on a cruise ship. Surge protectors and power strips tend to be confiscated for being a fire hazard, but bringing a good USB outlet is perfectly safe to bring along. The next tip that repeat cruisers always use is to bring bathing suits on embarkation day. One of the best times to enjoy the pools and water slides on a Royal Caribbean ship is the first day of your cruise. Most other guests don't have their bathing suits with them, and that means very little competition for the aquatic fun on board. You can opt to either wear your bathing suits on board or just keep it in your carry-on luggage and then change in a restroom or even when your room is available later on. The next tip is to, once on board your ship, put your phone into airplane mode. To avoid those crazy roaming fees, once you get on board your cruise, the best thing you can do is place your phone into airplane mode. By doing this, you'll still be able to use the ship's Wi-Fi, but avoid your carrier charging you exorbitant fees for roaming on another network, either at sea or in one of the countries you're going to be visiting. The next tip is to bring a pen and highlighter with you. You never know when you may want to write a thank you note to a crew member or highlight an activity that you do not want to miss in the cruise compass. Another tip that repeat cruisers always use is to study the cruise compass before the day starts. Each evening, your stateroom attendant will deliver the next day's cruise compass to your room. Your best bet to avoid missing out on an activity you really want to do is read it before you get going the next day. Another really popular tip is to bring magnetic hooks with you. Something you may not realize about your cabin is how little opportunity there is to hang stuff. By investing in a pack of strong magnetic hooks, you can place them around the room to hang your hats, swimsuits, or really whatever else needs to be hung. Your stateroom walls are made out of metal, which means you can simply stick a magnet onto a wall or ceiling. One tip that I love to share is to always speak up if there's a problem. If something's not as expected or disappointing, do not just accept it and let it ruin your cruise vacation. Instead, speak up while on board the ship and nicely inform the crew members of the issue and ask how it can be resolved. The crew members want to make your cruise exceptional and will do whatever they can to make it right. The bottom line is, do not hesitate to speak up if you observe any kind of issues on board. The next popular tip that our readers wanted to share was to book anything you can in advance via the cruise planner. This sounds so simple, but booking activities, dining, and more before your Royal Caribbean cruise via Royal Caribbean's cruise planner website will make your cruise vacation easier. On Oasis or Quantum class ships, you can even pre-book entertainment to reserve admission into the event. Keep in mind that you can always change your mind later on, but having something locked in is better than nothing at all. Our readers also like to look for deals even if there is no sale posted. Royal Caribbean will run sales periodically, but don't limit yourself to just those sales in order to find deals. Check the cruise planner regularly, even if there is no sale posted, you never know what you may find. One of my favorite bits of advice is to use a good travel agent to book and manage your cruise. A good travel agent is more than somebody who just takes your credit card details and reserves a cabin for you. Travel agents are your advocates throughout the cruise process and are invaluable if an issue should arise at any point. More to the point, travel agents will absolutely save you time and have the potential to save you money along the way. Since a good travel agent should cost you nothing extra to use, the cruise line pays them a commission, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain by using one. A really good bit of advice is to figure out what you like to do and then craft your cruise around that. Are you an active, out and about kind of person or are you more of a room dweller? Are you in it for the ports you're visiting or are you in it for the ship? Are you a foodie or are you fine with just the main dining room and the wind jamaire? Knowing what you like and don't like impacts everything from your room selection to your excursions to your daily planning. By figuring out your preferences, you can pick out a better cruise that matches what you want. 
A really great tip is don't wait for the elevator. Look, elevators are great, but using the stairs can be a lot faster, plus it can help burn off some of those vacation calories. If you're gonna go up or down just a few decks, opting for the stairs will likely get you there quicker. This is especially true when shows or events let out and many other guests descend upon the elevators. Did you know there are no self-service laundry options or any clothing irons on Royal Caribbean cruise ships? The only option if you want to have clothes pressed or clean is to send them out for dry cleaning, which has an additional cost to it. If you're concerned about your clothes being wrinkle-free after you unpack on board, invest in a good wrinkle release spray like Downey's product. You simply spray the clothing to remove any unwanted creases or wrinkles. Plus, it has the added bonus of making your clothing smell good again, which can be an issue if your luggage that you have in your basement or attic has an odd odor to it. A lot of first-time cruisers are always a little worried about getting seasick on there, and if you do get seasick or you want to avoid getting seasick, there's a really easy remedy. While you can take over-the-counter medication to combat nausea caused by motion in the ocean, mild seasickness can be remedied with a green apple. Seriously, green apples are a natural remedy that crew and guests use alike, and along with crackers help ease an uneasy stomach. You'll find green apples in the wind jammer, so it might be a good idea to take a couple with you to your stateroom just in case. If you've got kids, definitely keep your eye out for kids' sale-free deals. Royal Caribbean offers promotions throughout the year where kids under the age of 13 staying in the same room as two adults can qualify for free cruise fare. There are a lot of blackout dates, but if you can make it work in your schedule, the Kids Sale Free deal is among the most lucrative promotions offered, and there's usually a Kids Sale Free promotion every few months. And our last tip that repeat Royal Caribbean cruisers always use is to talk to the crew members. Beyond letting the crew members take your drink orders or asking where the nearest restroom is, be sure to strike up conversations with crew members you encounter. Your cabin attendant is usually one for a quick chat. You might learn a thing or two, and it can really help make someone's day. So there you go, 17 Royal Caribbean tips that repeat cruisers always use. Big shout out to our wonderful community here at royalcaribbeanblog.com for sharing these tips with us. And if you have a tip that we didn't cover in here, I would love to hear your favorite Royal Caribbean cruising tip that you use all the time. Give me like just one, the one thing you would recommend to somebody. Type it in our comments below. Would love to hear that. Also, also be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that way you don't miss out on any of these great videos. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again very soon.